Hello, this is Rich Spots. I'm speaking to you from Trinity Church, which is in Solbury, Pennsylvania, which is in Bucks County, just outside of Philadelphia. And today I will be doing the third chorale for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. But before doing so, I'd like to describe the world of Charles Tornemir and the formative years and some of the formative influences in his life. Tornemir came of age during the fin de siècle period, the close of the 19th century. This is when he went to college, and this is when he assumed the position at San Clotilde, the church that he would serve for the rest of his life. The fin de siècle period came on the heels of the Franco-Prussian War. France had suffered an ignoble defeat to the Germans in the Franco-Prussian War in 1870, and then with that came the Paris Commune. The Paris Commune led to thousands of deaths and also led to the birth of the Third Republic. The Franco-Prussian War set the tenor for the Third Republic. It is no coincidence that the holiday Bastille Day became a national holiday and then a building like the Eiffel Tower became built because that was an expression of French superiority by a country that in fact was very insecure. At the same time, we saw the Catholic Church building Sacre Coeur, which was a piacular monument in stone to set to atone for the sins of the past century. It is those two buildings, the Eiffel Tower and the Basilica Sacre Coeur, that came to define the two factions of the Third Republic. The Third Republic also saw the rise of positivism. Positivism was a philosophy started by Augusta Comte that was a form of scientism, a philosophical scientism, at where material progress becomes a moral force. This philosophy ran counter to the church philosophy at the time, and it was during this period that church schools were shut down, and even the Sorbonne, which was founded by Notre Dame during the Middle Ages, was forced to close its theological department. The art and literature of the time address a lot of the tensions in society. And in addition to the symbolist and Tsar Paladin, who I had mentioned earlier, and the author Joris Karl Huismans, there was also the author Ernest Ello, who was a philosopher and theologian. He wrote the book, The Man, life, art, and science. And then there was also the author, Lan Blois. He was known as the Pilgrim of the Absolute. Blois, the Pilgrim of the Absolute, was most famously the godfather of Jacques and Marisa Maritain. Jacques Maritain is most famously known as a Neo-Thomas philosopher and he even taught at Princeton just a few miles away. These three authors, who I like to term the fin de siècle Catholic mystics, Huismans, Elo, and Blois, were highly influential upon Tournemir and shaped the character of his music. So to understand Tournemir, you really need to read the works of these three authors. That's probably enough for now on that topic. So for now, we'll take a look at the third chorale for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. A lot of the chorales tend to be austere and very stoic. This one, however, is very joyful. Its text, I will always give thanks unto the Lord. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. This piece is exceptionally jubilant and is a welcome relief from the austerity of the general chorale suite. So that said, here is the 
third chorale for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. <laughs> 